Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, sagas in minutes. The series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today, we'll be going on a dark journey of internal and external strife with the gut-punching saga that is Water 7. Water 7 is the fourth saga of the series consisting of four arcs, which are told over a whopping 139 chapters and 110 anime episodes. So it's a sizable piece of story. And we commence with following the Straw Hats landing back onto the Blue Sea, as they quickly find themselves on the island of Long Ring Long Land. Here they meet a bunch of bizarre creatures, including Tonjit, as well as a pirate named Foxy, who challenges the Straw Hats to a Davy backfight, which is essentially a pirate contest that allows the winners of certain events to poach crew members or even take the opposing crew's flag. And so a nice comical contest starts up, consisting consisting of three events, culminating in Luffy donning an afro and defeating Captain Foxy in one of the most hilarious battles of One Piece history. And I very much hope you enjoyed this brief moment of comedy, because this is where things are going to start getting uh, pretty real. First up, the crew encounter Marine Admiral Aokiji, a man of unfathomable power at this point in the story, who manages to easily dismiss Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, as well as warn the crew that Robin is a threat to the world due to her ability to read the ancient language, as well as a threat to them, as every organization that she has ever been a part of has ceased to exist. With her going on to be the only survivor. However, for Mr. Aokiji, this is a private visit, and he allows the Straw Hats to leave Long Ring Long Land because of Luffy's helpful actions in bringing down the corrupt warlord Sir Crocodile on Alabasta. However, being completely outclassed by a Marine Admiral is but one problem, as the crew also discover that their ship, the Going Merry, is in desperate need of repair, and so they travel to the shipbuilding island of Water 7 to find a shipwright to help. Having landed in Anime Venice, the crew splits up into four different groups, with Zoro staying with the ship, whilst Luffy, Nami, and Usopp took the gold attained from Skypiea in order to exchange it for 300 million berries. Meanwhile, Sanji goes off and does his own thing, as does Chopper and Robin. However, Robin soon encounters a mysterious figure in a mask, claiming to be a member of CP9, a term that Robin is apparently apparently familiar with, and thus he abducts her. Luffy and Nami find their way to dock one of the Galila company to contract a shipwright to take a look at the Going Merry. However, after an inspection, it is deemed that the ship is unfixable due to having a broken keel. In the meantime, Usopp is attacked by thugs belonging to a group known as the Frankie family who stole most of the money the Straw Hats traded for their gold. After discovering a beaten Usopp, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Chopper, in an act of glorious revenge, rain all hell down upon the Frankie family base, completely destroying it, as well as defeating the entire family save for their leader Frankie, who had already taken the money and gone elsewhere. At this point, Luffy makes the tough decision to part with the Going Merry and to buy a new ship. A course of action that does not sit right with Usopp, who claims that Merry is as much their crewmate as anyone else, and starts an altercation with Luffy that culminates in Usopp leaving the crew and challenging Luffy to fight for the rights for the Going Merry. During this fight, Usopp displays a stunning evolution, able to hold his own against Luffy, using the various technologies and tricks that he has acquired throughout his journey. However, ultimately, Luffy still wins the battle, but tearfully leaves the Going Merry to Usopp as Luffy and the rest of the crew move onward. The next morning, the crew receives news that Iceberg, the mayor of Water 7, was shot by Robin. And just to make things even worse, it is announced that Aqua Laguna, a tidal wave that engulfs the lower part of Water 7, will be hitting the city that very night. As Luffy and the Straw Hats work to figure out what is happening with Robin, it becomes apparent that several members of Galila are in fact agents of CP9, a world government organization that specializes in espionage and assassination. Their mission on Water 7 was to acquire the blueprints for the ancient weapon Pluton, which were thought to be held by Iceberg, as well as capture Nico Robin and present her for execution on the judicial island of any Slobby. The group succeeded in the latter blackmailing Robin by threatening to kill the other Straw Hat Pirates and securing her cooperation in their plans. However, they failed to acquire the blueprints to Pluton, which were actually being held by Frankie. And as it happens, both Frankie and Iceberg were apprentices of a fisherman shipwright named Tom, who is best known for having built the Aura Jackson, a ship used by the former pirate king, Gold D. Roger. Knowing this, CP9 also moves to capture Frankie and take him along with Robin aboard the sea train bound for any Slobby. Shortly before the train departed, both Sanji and Usopp independently boarded it, managing to free Frankie and attempt to rescue Robin. However, Usopp having left the crew took it upon himself to craft an alternate identity, becoming the superhero Soga King, because he was too ashamed to face the crew. Ultimately, their efforts would be unsuccessful though, as Frankie was recaptured, while Sanji and Soga King were forced to regroup on another train with the rest of the crew. This train consisted of the remaining Straw Hats, the Frankie family, and Galila, who had formed an alliance to pursue Robin, Frankie, and deliver vengeance upon the agents who infiltrated Galila. And thus the small army went on to invade the island of any Slobby. Luffy, being impatient and such, went marching on ahead and found his way to the Tower of Justice rather quickly, where he was pit against Bluno. And in order to swiftly defeat him, Luffy revealed Gear Second, a technique that he had developed after encountering Aokiji to ensure that he would be able to protect his crewmates. After taking down the cow lookalike, Luffy yelled for Robin at the top of his lungs, prompting the rest of CP9 to step out, and they would eventually be greeted with the six members of the Straw Hats who had come to declare war on the world government, but more importantly, reclaim Robin. 
After breaking into the Tower of Justice, the Straw Hats each faced off against various members of CP9, with many of them displaying power-ups of sorts, such as Nami's new and improved climb attack techniques, Sanji's Diablo Jumba, and Zoro's Ashura. During these fights, the idiotic leader of CP9, Spandam, also accidentally summoned a teeny tiny buster call on the island, which is a fleet of 10 marine battleships helmed by five vice admirals who are charged with destroying an entire island with no questions asked. This was also an event that Robin had witnessed once before, as she grew up on the island of Ohara, which was populated by scholars seeking the true history of the world. Upon discovering this, the world government had the island eradicated using a buster call. However, Robin survived due to the sympathetic actions of Vice Admiral Kuzan, who would go on to become Admiral Aokichi. However, due to Robin's knowledge, a bounty of 79 million berries was placed on her head at the age of eight years old. And so she began a life consistently on the run, being betrayed by everyone she came into contact with until she met Crocodile and joined Baroque Works. And you know what, even then she was eventually betrayed by him, so yeah. Which was why it was all the more impactful when Robin found the straw hat and became part of their crew because for the first time in her life, she had found a place where she belonged with people that she felt she could trust. And so Robin eventually overcame her fear of the world government as well as her resignation to death and exclaimed to Luffy that she wanted to live, prompting the current events inside the Tower of Justice. With almost every member of CP9 defeated, Robin was then freed by Frankie and the Straw Hats began to face the full force of the Buster Call whilst Luffy was still locked in combat with the final CP9 member, Rob Lucci. After giving everything he had to give, Luffy eventually overcame Lucci. However, the Straw Hats were still faced with an impossible situation, surrounded entirely by marine forces. And at that very moment, they all heard a voice prompting them to jump into the ocean, to which they did and landed on the Going Merry, which had come all the way to any slobby in order to rescue them after begging Iceberg to patch it up. Because by the way, in this world, some ships do have a sense of sentience and the Going Merry happened to be one of them. After saving the crew, Mary began to completely break down and it was decided that it was time to lay her to rest. The Straw Hat stayed with Mary as she burnt and the ship gave a touching goodbye to the crew, grateful for the time she got to spend with them. And with that, an invaluable member of the Straw Hat Pirates was lost, but her legacy would live on within a new ship built by Frankie, known as the Thousand Sunny. As it turns out, Frankie's dream was to build a ship capable of sailing the entire world, and he had spent the money he stole from the Straw Hats on wood from the treasure tree Adam. Frankie then gifted the ship to the Straw Hats and was even recruited to become their official shipwright, a position that the Frankie family begged them to give him, because as a result of his actions on any slobby, Frankie had been assigned a bounty of 44 million berries. In fact, as it would turn out, all of the Straw Hats were given bounties, with Luffy's in particular being raised to a staggering 300 million berries. Prior to leaving Water 7, Luffy also received a visit from his grandfather, Monkey D. Garp, who was a vice admiral of the Marines. Garp then informed Luffy that the latter half of the Grand Line was known as the New World and was ruled by the Yonko, or the Four Emperors, one of which was Luffy's idol, Redhead Shanks. The others being Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, and two as of yet unmet characters known only as Big Mom and Kaido. To top everything off, it was also revealed that Dragon was Luffy's father. Dragon being the man who saved Luffy in Logtown and who was known as the leader of the Revolutionary Army and the most wanted man in the world. Luffy also had a brief reunion with Kobe, who was serving under Garp and who had undergone quite a growth spurt and now held the dream of becoming a Marine Admiral. As the Straw Hats were about to leave Water 7 with Robin safely returned and a new recruit in Frankie, all that was left was to reacquire Usopp, who would go on to apologize for his actions and be warmly welcomed back into the crew as they embarked on their next adventure. But just before we leave this saga, two more events of staggering importance to the greater world would occur. The first of which being a meeting between Shanks and Whitebeard, two of the aforementioned four emperors of the sea. Shanks had come to visit Whitebeard in order to warn him to call back Ace, who was in pursuit of Blackbeard, telling him that it was Blackbeard who dealt Shanks the scar on his face. However, Whitebeard refused to do so, and the two had somewhat of a heated disagreement, which ended in them both drawing their weapons and committing a single strike so powerful that it split the very sky above them clean open. At the same time, on Bonaro Island, it was too late anyway, as Ace had finally tracked down Blackbeard. Ace had been hunting him down to secure vengeance, as Blackbeard was responsible for the murder of Thatch, the fourth division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Blackbeard committed this act in order to obtain a devil fruit that Thatch had discovered known as the Yami Yami no Mi, a Logia type fruit that gives its user the ability to conjure, manipulate, and become darkness, which is also said to be the most evil of all devil fruits. And Blackbeard goes on to demonstrate this power firsthand by engaging in combat with Fire Fist Ace, and while the the results of this battle were unknown at the time, it would go on to be the catalyst for an entire saga to come.
Next time on Sagas in Minutes, things are going to be getting spooky as we explore the world's largest pirate ship situated in the mysterious Florian Triangle during the Thriller Bark Saga. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Water 7 Saga. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. The Water 7 saga was full of animals, ranging from the mundane like mice, frogs, and pandas, to the more deadly leopards, giraffes, and cows. However, the king of all beasts and the true villain of this arc must never be forgotten, and that is the sadistic pigeon. The Straw Hats never stood a chance.